Now, folks, if you thought that Biden's press conference was a disaster, wait until you hear about Kamala Harris's latest campaign trail fiasco. Picture this, the vice president of the United States standing in front of a crowd in Michigan repeating 32 days like a broken record because her teleprompter malfunctioned. But that's not all. While Harris fumbles, J.D. Vance is rising, delivering a message that's resonating with Americans. And wait until you hear what he said about Harris's policies. This is a tale of two Americas, my friends. Now, check this out. Are you listening? While Kamala Harris stumbles over teleprompters, our national debt has skyrocketed past $35 trillion. The government's borrowing just to pay interest, sinking us deeper into debt. Meanwhile, gold's value has soared past $2,400 an ounce. Smart investors are moving from risky paper money to constitutionally backed gold and silver. If you've got funds in a low interest account or a 401k IRA, it's time to call Global Gold Investments, America's top conservative precious metals dealer. Get their free 2024 Protect Your Wealth and Retirement Guide. Call that number on the screen, 888-700-4148. Mention Next News for VIP treatments and a free portfolio analysis. Don't wait. Call 888-700-4148 or visit IRAGoldProof.com. Remember, without gold, you don't have real wealth. So where do we begin with uh, this story today? Yeah, Magic Johnson, he showed up. That's probably why everyone showed up to see Kamala Harris today. You know, she can't draw a crowd unless she's got some name recognition. We'll play his remarks in a minute. But uh, this is the moment that Kamala Harris has no clue what to say after her teleprompter appears to stop working. She just keeps repeating herself. This is so cringe, and it is so indicative that this woman is a failure and a fraud. Remember his number? 32. Today we got 32 days until the election. (laughs) So 32 days. 32 days. Okay, we got some business to do. We got some business to do. All right. 32 days. And we know we will do it. And, and this is going to be a very tight race until the very end. This is going to be a very tight race until the very end. We are the underdog. And we know we have some hard work ahead. (laughs) We are the underdog, she says. But you can see the terror on her face when the teleprompter fails. Just watch her face. Watch her reaction. And she keeps going 32, 32. She's looking around. She's checking each prompter because they've got glass panels on either side of the stage and one big one in front of her. Okay. It's it's so clear, the terror on her face. And then she starts fumbling around, stumbling, trying to fill the time. And she looks around, uh-oh. Oh, oh, wait, oh yeah, she's looking. What do I do? She's terrified. Look at, she looks up. Oh no, teleprompter's not working. Come on guys, get it working again. Okay, do you guys get it working again? She's still looking around. Okay, she turns to the center. She's checking. She's trying to send cues. All she can do is keep repeating those last words that are stuck on the teleprompter. 32 days. Oh, there she is. Okay, 32 days. Yep. Look, okay, guys. It's still there. 32 days. (laughs) I mean, if this was Trump, he wouldn't need a teleprompter. He would just go off the cuff for five minutes while the tech team figured it out. Okay, we got some business. She's just filibustering now because the tech guys are scrambling to figure out how to fix the teleprompter. (laughs) Oh, man. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. Of course, she had to give us that cringe about Magic Johnson's number. Trump war room posting. She actually says groceries are still too high. And they... They said, we know because you caused this with your tie-breaking votes on the spending that caused record inflation. 
still too high. Prices for everyday things like groceries are still too high. You know it and I know. Yeah, we know it because it's your fault. Here's more. She acknowledges at another event that home prices are too expensive. $5,000, including, including providing first-time home buyers with a $25,000 down payment assistance so they can just get their foot literally in the door to be able to invest in the American dream. Mm, trying to buy votes with that plan. Kamala admits grocery prices are too high, pins the blame on corporate price gouging. And to lower cost prices for everyday things like groceries are still too high. You know it and I know it. And so we have a plan to lower costs on everything from health care to groceries, including what I've done in my career as attorney general, which is we got to take on corporate price gouging. <laughs> this is what blows my mind. We have a plan to do this. But you are the freaking vice president. You have the ear of the president. And you can't just walk into the Oval Office and say, here's my plan. Let's execute it now. Let's give the people the relief they need now. Oh, no. I'm going to dangle that carrot until election day. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. None of this makes sense. I don't even know how you can have a campaign platform like this. Who writes these campaign platforms? Home prices is too high. Get, groceries are too high. And then she goes into this thing about unions. When unions are strong, America is strong. Trump War Room points out that unions are currently not strong. Their members, members are suffering under record inflation because of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden policies. And the bottom line is when unions are strong, America is strong. <laughs> And our unions have always fought to make our nation then more equal, more fair, and more free. And in this election, in 32 days, everything we have fought for is on the line. And the bottom yeah. line is... Everything we fought for. Uh, so the clip we just showed you, this is the turnout that she had for that event. Pretty paltry turnout in Michigan. Now, J.D. Vance, he also had a rally today, quite the turnout, and he took Kamala to task. What bothers me so much, as an American leader, it is your job to show up and do what is necessary. And here's, you know, here, here's what bothers me so much about Kamala Harris, and I think about all the things that we could criticize her on. But at the beginning of her administration, you know that she fought very hard to make sure that COVID relief money went to illegal aliens to the tune of $1,000 per person, making sure that money went to illegal aliens. And she shows up to survey the storm damage a couple of days ago, and she says that we're going to give $750 to the people suffering from these devastating storms. Well, Kamala, I think you've got it exactly the opposite. The federal government ought to give all it can to the American citizens devastated by these storms, not to illegal aliens who have no right to be here. As an American... J.D. Vance tearing it up today. Oh, he brought up 32 days as well. Let's we'll see the how he leadership of this country in 32 days. We're going to change the leadership of this country, and we're going to rebuild the American dream stronger than ever. Keep faith. Keep faith in our country. Keep faith in our people. Keep faith amongst ourselves, because Kamala Harris, I'm telling you, we're going to look back at Kamala Harris as a blip in the radar, as a one brief exception to the greatest American story and the, and in 30 the greatest two American story ever. So... Both of them out on the campaign trail today. Kamala Harris playing with her uh, teleprompter problems. And here's Magic Johnson. Brian, go vertical, please. Opponent. Now, there's a lot of black men in here, and I don't mean to, you know, not talk to other people, but this is important. Come on. Our black men, we got to get them out to vote. That's number one.
Kamala's opponent promised a lot of things last time to the black community that he did not deliver on. Is that right? All right. Is that right, Magic? What? What exactly did he not deliver on? What about the record amount of money that he gave to the black colleges? What about that? What about the opportunity zones that he set up in low-income communities to stimulate their economies? What about all the things he did there? Magic? Kamala's opponent promised a lot of things last time to the black community that he did not deliver on. Come on. And we got to make sure we help black men understand that. So that's why I'm here to make sure I help black men understand. First, get out and vote and then vote for the next president of the United States, Kamala Harris. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing that uh, he was there. Otherwise, that room would have been empty. So there you have it. Kamala Harris, the woman who's supposed to be ready to step into the presidency at a moment's notice, can't even handle a teleprompter malfunction. Meanwhile, J.D. Vance is offering a clear and decisive vision for America's future. It's a stark contrast that's becoming impossible to ignore. But here's what I want to know from you. After seeing Harris' performance and hearing Vance's message, who do you think is more prepared to lead our country? Share your thoughts in the comments below.